So I want to tell you how I came to the GSP and how it was the next step on a very well-defined career path. But that's not true. I applied to the GSP because I didn't like what I was doing. And I came to the GSP because I was not passionate about what I was doing. And to be quite frank, even during the first year here at Stanford, at the GSP, I was struggling to find something I'm really passionate about. And I know this might not be true for all of you in this room. But some of you do struggle to find their passion. I know it's true for a couple of my friends and classmates. So instead of freaking out and how to find your passion, I'd ask you to lean back a few minutes and listen to me. Because I found a way how I know how to find my passion. I would like to share it with you. Maybe is there something that you can learn from this. Some of you might remember pretty much a year ago when the CEO of Ferrari was standing right here on the stage. And he said one thing that resonated with me. He told us that at Ferrari, his people are so passionate about what they're doing, they would even go to work if they didn't get a salary. And to be quite frank, there's only one time in my life when I can think of a moment where I was that passionate about what I was doing. I was standing on the screen, and I was taking a practice swing. And I took another practice swing. And then I approached the ball, had a last look at the hole, and putted the ball. And I remember how the ball was aiming slightly left at the hole, but then it took a break, the break I had foreseen. It hit the back of the hole and disappeared. And I was ecstatic. We made it. We were in the German championships. And all my friends came across. We hugged each other and celebrated each other. We had made it. We became German champions. Before and during high school and college, I played on the German national golf team. And I remember I was really passionate about what I was doing. I really loved it. But at some point, I realized I didn't want to spend my life competing against my best friends. And I also thought, I have a higher calling, or let's call it responsibility for society. So instead of turning pro, I applied for college. And back then, it wasn't such a hard decision for me to go to college. Because luckily, I'd been accepted at one of Germany's most exclusive colleges, which I thought was a great launch pad for a really successful career. Little did I know how long after making this decision, I would still struggle to fight my passion. Little did I know how many sleepless nights I would ask myself, what do I want to do with my life? And as I said, it, even when I got here, it didn't really change. The first year, I was asking myself, what is it that I'm passionate about? And I didn't find a solution to that. But then I took this class across campus. The call, it's called the Lean Launch, but where you get the chance to work in your own startup. And it all started when I was sitting on my couch at home with my friend, Bashak. Bashak is Karim's girlfriend. And she's really passionate about fashion. She told me this truly inspiring story how when she was born and raised in Turkey, she packed her bags and moved all the way to New York, where she studied at the Fashion Institute of Technology, one of the best schools in New York for fashion. And there she really loved what she was doing. She designed her own fashion styles. She presented them on a runway to talent agents and buyers. And she was just passionate about what she was doing. But while she told me how much she loved fashion, I could sense some frustration in her face. So I challenged her and asked her, Bashak, what happened next? And she tells me, well, today, I work in a cubicle in a 9 to 5 computer job for a mediocre fashion brand, and I don't really like what I'm doing. And to be quite frank, I was really sad when I heard that. Why? Because I know that she had found her passion. <laughs> That's Karim's <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> so in, I challenged her and asked her, explain me, what is it exactly that makes it so hard for you to become your own boss, to become a fashion designer? And she said, well, first of all, it's very expensive. I need a lot of money. I need money because I need to make up for the salary that I'm not earning, and I need money for the styles, for the samples I need to create, which costs up to $700 in New York. And I pushed back. I said, Bashag, what if we did the following? What if you created your designs in your free time? And what if I took care of sourcing the samples from Asia, where I'd been a lot? 
and only a fraction of the price is what you have to pay to get your samples from over there. And she got excited. She said, yeah, this is, this is really cool. We should do that. But then she, she thought for a moment and said, you know what? It's actually not only that. I also need somebody to take care of marketing. I need a showroom. And I need somebody to acquire customers for me. And I thought, and I got excited about pushing back and trying something that we've never tried before, you know? Be a little more creative. So I told her, what if we created this website where you can upload your styles? And I would drive a lot of traffic on the website that would give feedback on her styles, provide comments, and maybe even pre-order them. And I could sense she got excited. She said, I really want to do that. But then she said, you know what? To be quite frank, the problem is a different one. The problem is I'm a fashion designer, and I'm not a business person. I'm really good at designing fashion items, but I'm not good at solving business problems. And I spent the last two months talking to designers like Bashak, and I got the same answer over and over again. I'm good at designing fashion items. I'm not good at solving business problems. There's one thing that not all of you know. I actually started a fashion brand before school. And just to give you an example, this is one of the styles that my friend Katie, who is the designer, and I are selling right now in Germany. I met Katie a while ago, and she told me about her passion to become a designer, to design purses, clutches, wallets, belts, and shoes, and all matching in a color. And I told her, why don't we send styles to India, fly to India, which is what we did, and visit the tailors who sample for us. We visited 12 of them. One of them provided really good quality, so we decided to buy the first batch, 100 bags, take them all to Germany, put them in the trunk of our car, and we drove around Germany. We visited 300 boutiques, and I guess we've got around 60 customers today. These 60 customers are paying my friend's salary right now and allow me to be here. What I want to say is that we've got the skills to help these people. We have the skills to enable them these people, Bashak, to pursue their passion. And I encourage you to do this, the same thing too. Why? Because helping Bashak and helping my friend Katie has been the most rewarding experience ever since I hold this putt. So when you leave the room, why don't you go across the street and talk to the engineering students and ask them, what are you passionate about? What are the problems that you're trying to solve? Or why don't you talk to your med school friend and ask him, what are you passionate about? What are the problems you're trying to solve? Maybe you can help. Sometimes even law school students have good ideas. Why don't you talk to that? <laughs> Why don't you talk to that law school friend of yours and ask him, what are you passionate about? Maybe you can help him. Again, enabling others to pursue their passion is just as fulfilling as finding your own passion. And I want you to do, this, I want you to do the same thing. Because I don't want you to wake up one day after you leave the campus and find yourself working in a cubicle for a mediocre company in a job you're not passionate about. Thank you. <laughs>